In this video, we'll be taking apart the Infinix GT10 Pro. Subscribe and click on the notification bell if you're interested in seeing more videos like this. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. To start off, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Here's a better look at that. Now heat needs to be applied to the back plate using a hair dryer or a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive underneath and then a plastic pry tool can be used to pry the back plate off. Whoever assembled this phone forgot to remove the film over the adhesive strip, so that would definitely compromise any sort of water resistance the device may have. Here's a better look at the plastic backplate. This glass camera lens cover can be replaced by applying heat and gently prying it off, so you don't need to take apart the phone to replace that. There are 17 Phillips screws which need to be removed. Now a plastic pry tool needs to be placed in between the back housing and the frame of the screen and ran along the edges to pop off the catches. Now before you completely lift up and remove the back housing, the flex cable for the LED light needs to be disconnected from the main board. The back housing is also made of plastic. These glass camera lens covers can also be replaced by applying heat and prying them off, so again you won't need to take apart the phone to replace those. The quad LED flash for the camera is located here, the back LED lighting or accent lighting is here, and there's the NFC antenna, as well as some antenna flex cables on the sides. Looking at the other side, we can see more antenna flex cables around the border of the back housing. There is also a sheet of graphite film to help transfer heat. The battery cables can now be disconnected from the main board, followed by the rest of the flex cables. The two coaxial cables on the right side of the board can be disconnected by just popping them off. At this point, there are two Phillips screws which are holding down the main board. Looking at the main board, there's a 108 megapixel primary camera and a 2 megapixel depth and macro lens. None of the cameras have OIS or optical image stabilization. The camera connectors can be disconnected by just popping them off. There's a secondary microphone located up here, a liquid damage indicator sticker, and some copper tape on the shields to help transfer heat. The SIM card and memory card reader is located on the back, as well as the dual LED front facing flash and proximity sensor. We also have a better look at the 32 megapixel front facing camera. There is thermal paste on the back shields to help transfer heat. Once the shield cover on the back has been removed, we can see more thermal paste on these chips. Once the thermal paste has been removed, we can see the RAM and processor, as well as the ROM or storage. Now in order to remove the battery, there is an adhesive pull pouch provided to help you pry it off.
Here's a better look at the 5000 mAh battery. And even with that adhesive pull pouch provided, it's still difficult to pry this battery off with that pull pouch, so you will need to heat it up a little bit or use some tools to help you pry it off. There's a single Phillips screw which is holding down the speaker assembly. There's some more graphite film over the speaker assembly. And here's a look at the speaker itself. The flex cable for the fingerprint sensor or fingerprint reader, as well as this flex cable and the other two ends of the coaxial cable need to be disconnected from the subboard. There's one more Phillips screw which is holding on the subboard. There are rubber gaskets around the charger port and headphone jack, as well as a liquid damage indicator sticker. And the primary microphone is located underneath this rubber gasket. Here's a look at the other side. The Z-axis linear motor or vibrator motor is located on the bottom right corner. The fingerprint reader and the vibrator motor are both held down with some adhesive. So if you need to replace those, you have to just gently heat them up and pry them off. This flex cable connects the main board to the subboard, as well as the fingerprint reader. Once the battery adhesive pouch has been peeled back, we have a better look at the flex cable for the screen, which is routed through an opening in the midframe. So if you needed to replace the screen, you'd have to remove the back plate, the screws on the back housing and the back housing itself. You then have to disconnect the battery cables and pry the battery off, as well as peel off the battery adhesive pouch and disconnect the screen cable from the main board at which point you'd heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath. You'd pry the old screen off, apply new adhesive and reapply the new screen, making sure you run the flex cable back to the opening in the midframe and reassemble the phone. Once those flex cables have been peeled back, we have a better look at the copper vapor chamber which runs underneath the battery as well as the motherboard. The flex cable for the volume keys and power button is located on the side and it's held down with some adhesive. To replace that you have to just gently peel it off. And the earpiece speaker is located on top which is also held down with some adhesive. For the repairability score on this phone I give it a 5.5 out of 10. Now it's time to reassemble the phone. Once everything's back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply the back plate. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.